Good evening and welcome, everyone. We'll show you some of what we saw in Ashkelon, closer to Gaza earlier, but we start here in Tel Aviv tonight, where for six days now the world has watched and waited for the full might of the Israeli response to the horrific attacks inflicted on it. Anticipated by many to be a massive invasion of the Gaza Strip, making good on its promise to destroy Hamas after last Saturday's brutal terrorist rampage in southern Israel. The toll keeps getting worse. 1,300 in Israel now reported killed. More than 1,500 lives lost in Gaza as Israel steps up its bombing. At least 27 Americans have been killed. And the fate of as many as 150 hostages, including some Americans, remains uncertain tonight. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who was here today, says the U.S. is doing everything it can to secure their release. I pressed him on when, when we spoke one-on-one. -on -one. All as the humanitarian crisis in Gaza deepens. A U.N. agency estimates 340,000 Palestinians have been displaced as Israel's air campaign intensifies. Tonight, Israeli airstrikes relentlessly bombarding Gaza, with a potential ground invasion looming, tensions escalating here for six days now. This newly released body camera video from Saturday shows Israeli forces firing at militants and freeing hostages during Hamas's attack. But perhaps the most disturbing images of this war so far were released today by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on social media. Photos of babies so horrifying that we will not show you. Hamas has shown itself to be an enemy of civilization. Netanyahu sharing those images with Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who traveled to Israel in a show of support from the U.S. It's simply depravity in the worst imaginable way. And Secretary Blinken had this emotional moment with a survivor from the music festival. We're strong here. We're powerful here in this place now in Tel Aviv and everywhere. I sat down with him soon after. Is there a risk, a greater risk of a regional war at this point? Uh, we're determined that there not be. Uh, we deployed the largest aircraft carrier group that we have, the Gerald R. Ford, to the region. Uh, we've taken other steps to make it very clear to anyone who might think of taking advantage of this moment that that would be a big mistake. We're working with many other countries in the region, countries that may have influence with those who might consider doing something uh, to use that influence to, to, to uh, prevent it, to avoid it. I also traveled to the Israeli city of Ashkelon, not far from Gaza. Ashkelon is a virtual ghost town, except for a few people we saw at a cafe. Around us, the distant rumble of explosions, airstrikes hitting targets inside Gaza. And here, just a few miles from the Gaza border, evidence of those rocket attacks we've seen so much of. The crater here in the street and the shrapnel flying in so many directions, destroying this car. The people left here now bracing for the next phase of this war. Many told me they support a ground invasion of Gaza. And must destroy them completely. How will this period be remembered in Israeli history? It'll be remembered as, a, as a, the biggest wake-up call we ever had since the, the Holocaust. This is the time to act, not to talk. I met 26-year-old Daniel Tertarian at a local barber shop, still giving haircuts, a rare relic of peacetime here. In your view, is it going to be necessary to put Israeli troops on the ground? One thing I know for sure that uh, this thing called Hamas, it's, we need to finish them, whatever it takes, whatever it costs. People here are determined to help any way they can. This is kind of a citizen relief organization. They've been delivering food to troops at the front line. I believe they're taking these now to some troops about 15 minutes from here, but very, very close to the Gaza border. Sally Schiff is a dual Israeli-American citizen. If I was young enough and I was able enough, I would be joining that army. And I think everybody here, everybody here would be doing the same thing. We don't fear war. We want peace. But they're not giving us peace. Israeli forces say they have already dropped more than 6,000 bombs on Gaza. With power cut off, hospitals are chaotic and overwhelmed. Israel vowing no humanitarian aid will be allowed into Gaza until all hostages are released. 
Meanwhile, 14 Americans remain unaccounted for, 27 now confirmed dead, including Adrian Netta. I met her son Nahar earlier this week, holding out hope his mom would be found alive. I am confident, mom, I'm confident that you're holding on. We're waiting for you. We love you. Tonight, another family torn apart by this war. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.